Hi, I'm Shona Stewart. I'm with Dignity House. And uh, we've been here for five years now and serving um, basically just the women of Winnipeg, but uh, we have had other people come in from out of town. Um, I've been called to just share the gospel with them, but uh, unfortunately they have so many more needs. And so we try to help them move forward in the transition from um, being trafficked or exploited into um, whatever their heart desires, right? So they have many dreams. They never dreamed to be in that situation they were in in the first place. Uh, we have like uh, three, no, two homes, a service center on Selkirk, and I do groups and I do workshops. I'm their pastor. I'm the director. And uh, basically what you're going to find here in Winnipeg is most uh, women have drug addiction. Uh, the definition of trafficking is luring coercion, or force. Now, I haven't met any woman that haven't been either lured, coerced, or forced. So uh, we have plenty of traffic victims here right in Winnipeg. It's not outside of the country. It's right here. And so that's what we're trying to do is help these women. Uh, they have to have housing. They need job training. They need drug treatment. They need individual counseling. I, I just want to encourage people to be praying for them, not to be judging them, and to, to get out there and, and learn more about human trafficking, learn what you can do. You can, you know, um, come and volunteer for, for organizations that are helping. You can uh, give, you can share with other people about this uh, horrific topic. And, you know, just see if, if your churches want to have a speaker come in. I just thank you for having this day and that you're here to listen and hear a little bit more about human trafficking in Winnipeg. I just want to share a little bit about myself, how I got into the sex trade. Uh, it was back when I was 22 years old, and actually I was clean and sober, uh, and I met up with this pimp, and he thought, you know, he was luring me in by telling me about fur coats and diamonds and all this money we could make and get a business. And so I thought, wow, that's a great, you know, that sounds awesome. The only reason I thought that was awesome is because I had a childhood of abuse. I had a childhood of promiscuity and, and drug use and alcohol use. I, I did make a choice for the you know, healthy family background and things like that, nor did I know God. So it was uh, fairly easy for me to get into it. And But once you're in it, it's a trap. It's a, it's a whole, I was in it 16 years. And I had worked from streets of Vancouver to Calgary to Edmonton. Um, worked in massage parlors. I worked, I had my own massage parlor. Uh, we worked, I've been an escort. Um, I've had pimps, I've had no pimps. I've had times where it was really, really tough. You just get hopeless and you feel nobody would hire me. I have no skills. I couldn't go to McDonald's. They want grade 12. I didn't have grade 12 education. I went to Walmart, they gave me a form to fill in and it starts asking me if, if I've ever smoked marijuana or if I've ever, you know, uh, stolen anything, well, yeah, well, boom, you don't get the job. I didn't meet anybody who came along to say, here, there's a different way. There's, you know, a God who loves you. I didn't meet Jesus until I was 39 years old and an alpha. I never, ever knew a God uh, other than the one I'd made up in my own mind who was too far away and would strike me with lightning if I ever walked in a church. So, you know, we, we have these beliefs, we have experiences, we have all kinds of things going on in our lives, the reasons why we get into these situations. It's a real blessing how God has brought me out and brought me this far, and uh, I'm not letting him go.